always said no to me. <laughs> Bullet 
points, but listening to the other actor, that the, I feel like this is Jack, the story is in the other person, the story is in you. You got your own storyline, but just turn around and go up to the window. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, if you could down. come back again, oh, gosh. if you could run it back, is there something you didn't do or didn't take advantage of that if you came back and it was, Steve, it was 1973, is there anything that you would do differently knowing what you know today? That's a great question, first of all. Honestly, I don't know how to answer it because it seemed like what we were doing here, I seemed like I was busier than I could imagine being busy. Yes. Uh, the one thing I managed to avoid was acting. <laughs> acting classes that I never performed. Uh, I actually enjoyed acting class, and some of you were actually actors said, hey, you know, it's not so bad, but you know, you don't need to get involved in this. <laughs> <laughs> We're going in too many different directions, so just don't do this. So I suppose at some point, maybe if I had actually done that, maybe that would have been good. But on the other hand, they said I had plenty of other stuff going on. Um, you know, we were, we were just so lucky, because we got Jack, I think, right as he was really hitting his stride. Rod was gone, it was his theater, he was still, you know, in his early 40s, had energy galore. And we were really lucky recipients of that. Those of us who do that. So, I don't know, Kendall, I don't know, does that help or not? Well, Steve, every three or four years when we see each other, yeah. that's one of the things you bring up, that I did everything but I didn't act. Yeah. So I, I think somebody needs to cast you on the show. <laughs> And he's talking about, about the director, the designer. I mean, he, he is, he inherited the Jack Fryman mantle. I mean, he can do acts, <coughs> which is awesome. So, we'll see. <laughs> we have a question um, from the audience for, for anyone here. Didn't they like to jump in on the panel? Uh, what was the turning point in your career and who influenced you the most? <laughs> Jack and Chorus Line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there are too many because it's in a linear career of 50, 48, 50 years. Um, everybody, I think, everybody eventually influenced me um, in one way or the other. I maybe, if I had a re regret, I did turn down a third Broadway show because I was in a relationship. No. So as I was watching the play last night, I said, God, I wish I'd seen this play 45 years ago. <laughs> I thought about doing that. Well, who knows? But I think one of the things yeah. in the theater, you really develop a mantra that says, do not regret your choices. And if you choose to do something, it must be right. And if not, then fix it in another place. Yeah. Anybody else with that? I have one. It's a story that involves Steve. <laughs> um, it was shortly after my first year at ACT. Mm. Um, ACT had engaged a company to come in and, and really replace our control system. And um, I got the word that they were at the theater and they were in the light booth doing some initial work. And I walked into the light booth and here was this guy sitting down with a little 10 key pad and punching a bunch of buttons in. And um, I was overwhelmed because it was Steve Carlson. <laughs> and I went, Steve, what are you doing here? You know, what are you doing here? <laughs> remember that moment? I completely remember that moment because actually the machine they were getting was an LSA, the same machine that was on the course line. Yeah. And so that was the moment. From that moment was the moment when I became um, very interested in technology in a way that I never was before. And that was what pivoted my career in the theater and eventually my corporate career was that moment. Um, so it is Jack, it was Steve, uh, it was that crazy, uh, crazy light booth at DCT. Okay. And, uh, well, and Dirk too, right? Yeah. 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 But you sitting in front of that key fan, I said, there's got to be a reason behind the fact that a guy with this smart physics drama major is touching, I mean, that looked like a telephone dial pad, right? I mean, that was all. <laughs> no, that was the 8A. It had a keypad instead of toggle switches on the front. It was very, very <laughs> But it, it, was, uh, it was a 
was it a year later when I actually bought a computer and taught myself how to program um, that I realized, well, if this could run the lighting system, couldn't this help like do the purchase orders? You know, all, this, all, all the back end stuff, uh, Keith, that you've been involved in all these years. Well, you remember, we, we didn't have computers. The lighting designers so, we had exactly the same thought and started a company that did box office computer systems. Yeah. Back when nobody did them. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Same thing. Anyway, so thank you, Jack. Well, well Jack. thank you, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So, what did Jack teach you about teaching from the developing Oh, that's good. What did Jack teach you about teaching others? Who's I've saying that? Where's the person? <laughs> you know, I think uh, one of the things that I think that I learned is some sort of I spend a lot of time, I, I've been in the Seattle theater community for a, a long enough time that I know a lot of people. Um, my, one of my daughters is always, there's a joke between her and I that every time we go out and do something, I see somebody I know. Um, it's just that one of those weird things. And run into some other theater person that I know. Um, what I like to do a lot is when someone has a problem, I love to say, I know somebody who can help you. Yeah. So I will contact that person, or I will give you that person's contact information, or you know whatever, and make a connection with that person who can help you solve your problem, or who, who is a good you know, resource for you. Um, and that's kind of one of the things, uh, and there's, there's a similar answer to the previous question, one of the things that changed things for me was um, in between my junior and senior year of the summer, Jack suggested I go down to Berkeley to the Berkeley Repertory Theater. And it was at the old space on college. Yeah. 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 college. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Two buildings on top of each other. Yeah. It was a little tiny. It was a dump. But <laughs> it did great work. And, I, I, and he said, why don't you go and spend the summer interning? And um, I lived, breathed in the eighth theater for, you know, eight weeks. And it really, it just, it changed a lot of things in my mind. And it was a small, <coughs> intimate space with, I, I spent my time in the green room, which was also the office. <laughs> yeah. So when we did a matinee sometimes, I would be talking to the people who are selling tickets. And, and so I learned an awful lot about the, the running of the theater. It was the same kind of thing. Jack had those connections because he had worked there. So he called him up and said, I've got somebody that would be good for you. And so I went down there and did that. That's, what, that's one of the things he taught me is, is how to, it's about networking, but it's also about being that person. Yeah, that's the guy that can help. Being the guy that can help. Yeah. Being the guy that can yeah. make those connections. So Jan, to, to your point, because um, one of the things Jack taught me because I was maybe not so good at understanding was that you can learn from anyone. You need to just keep your yes. mind open and you will learn from everybody. Okay. And so it was also, and if you know something, as Keith said, pass it on. Yeah. Be, be that guy who can help. So in 1998, my middle son was starting high school. He was in the School of Science and Technology, Magnet School. They rented space in a high tech office park. And they, they didn't have a school building or anything. And he comes home and says, We decided we're forming a drama club. It's called the Flying Hedgehogs. You know about this stuff. You're going to. <laughs> so, okay, fine. So for the next four years, I got to be in my own poor, pale way, Jack. Okay. I, I, got, I didn't, the kids directed, but I was the guy I was saying, well, here's how you do this. This is why you design a set like this. This is why you don't paint the walls bright white. And, all these kids, and these kids, they had to rent a junior high school auditorium, so we actually had to make money and keep books and all this other stuff. And at the end of the four years, they were a functioning little theater company. They were like clockwork, and I take maybe this much credit because they were smart kids who just listened. But that was, I, I really felt like that was one of the kind of, you know, channel jack to, to, to do that. And honestly, at that point, if somebody said, hey, you know, we need a drama teacher over at the high school, I would have just said, you know, son, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm there, no, because I had a ball. That's, that's, 
great. I'm sorry, we've run out of time. The space is needed for something else right now. All right. Uh, but thank you all. One, one last question that I know is in everybody's mind. It's from a card here, so everybody can sleep tonight. This is for Steve. What happened to the attractive young woman? <laughs> <laughs> well, the attractive young woman was a still prom. And you can see they're all nodding. Oh, yes, yeah. she's very attractive. How many of you were we boys? We became good friends and, and all that. It was all very nice. But I guess I would say at one level, the cell is the thing that got me into this building. So maybe she's more important than Jack. She plays. <laughs> Good morning. It's still morning. It's still barely morning. <laughs>